come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. You can help us out with that by jumping over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Sean. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Holly. What do we watch tonight? Tonight we watched a little movie called Guns Akimbo. Mm, I have many questions. One. <laughs> when did it come out? Uh, well, technically 2019, but that was uh, the festival circuit. It was released, unfortunately for the film, in February of 2020. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm, and, probably, and probably not many people went to see it because they were like we have a whole year to go see movies you would be correct not many people saw it <laughs> was it a wide release um it was limited release but it's still like sad sad right, times yeah. <laughs> all of those movies yeah, because everybody got, was busy yeah. going to see the invisible man at, at that yeah. time instead so and then the world shut yeah. down yeah, right. mm-hmm. so you remember, we'll catch it next week yeah monster yeah. hunter the big budget Mila Jovovich, oh, Paul yeah. Anderson I, movie. Nope. I, I do. I remember I it now that you like, say never that. But that. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Don't remember that happening. Yeah. That was, uh, oh, that's yeah. why like, uh, you know, all these other movies pushed off their releases for yep. a year. So yep. you'd actually get a chance to, uh, who directed this movie? Uh, Jason Lee Howden. Who we would know from. He wrote and directed Deathgasm. Oh. oh yeah. 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 I've seen him like that movie. Yeah. He yeah. sure did. That's <laughs> probably... All you would know him from as far as directing, writing, um, but he's done visual effects on like all the Lord of the Rings movies, the Hobbit uh, movies, so Avengers, so The Great from, Gatsby, like Prometheus. So he's 100% New Zealand. That's, is what yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. he is. Okay. But he's had his hand Makes in sense. some big stuff, okay. which is pretty cool. But yeah, Deathgasm is probably the only other thing that you'd know him from. I know, because it's like yeah. the most modern version of Trick or Treat that you're going to see. <laughs> all comes back. And that's the back. one that Walmart censored the DVD, didn't they? Yeah, what'd they call it? They had a slipcase on yeah, it. Yeah, they had a slipcase that had a different title on it. They did. Yeah, yeah they I can't, can't remember, remember what, what the, it was, the but was, yeah, so. I remember that being a big and thing. And they can't even like kind of fix that. They can't cut off the gasm and just leave the death. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The death the yeah. They're just like, we got to change it entirely. Yeah. yeah. Put a slipcase on this motherfucker. Yeah. All right. Well, I didn't know he did that. Okay. Good. So uh, who's in this movie? Uh, starring Daniel Radcliffe. Who's he? Okay. I mean, yeah. if, if he's been alive for... He's so rich when he was 15 that he can do whatever movie he wants for the rest of his life. Yeah, he has he fuck you money. Interesting he shit. does, yeah. When's the last time Daniel Radcliffe was in a major motion picture? A wide release. Ooh. I actually think I may know the answer to this. Was it Women in Black? Ooh, that oh, movie's oh, oh, terrible. Oh, Oof. He had to have done something since Women he's in been Black. Doing a, he's been doing a TV show. Oh, uh, it's... Yeah, um, it's on TBS. Yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, it's, it's, uh, it's the it's, uh, Miracle Worker. Miracle yes. Workers, that's Which it. Which is pretty funny. Actually. And every, it actually is really funny. And every season has like a different setting. Yes. And that's same, a genius fucking idea. It's the idea. same cast, but it's a different setting, a different scenario. And like Steve Buscemi's in it. Yeah. He's it's God. really funny. Yeah. yeah. Didn't yeah. they do like an Old West one? That's and what then, they're doing that's now. That's what's right now. It's okay. uh, Oregon Trail. Oh, right. It is Oregon Trail. Yeah. yeah. So they're Perfect. specifically making all the, the first, Oregon Trail. Like, I think the first season they were like angels. Yeah. Like on like working like, yeah it like was like the setting job. the premise and now yeah. they're jumping through all these different times right. yeah it's actually pretty funny i haven't mm-hmm. been an avid watcher but from what i've seen i laughed pretty hard which it's like good job tbs you did something other than yeah. reruns for once good for you I know. my brother was like you gotta watch this show and of course i was like well that's not, that's never gonna happen yeah. and then i caught it one night and i was like oh my god this yeah. is actually really funny <laughs> like they, they're making an effort so good job yeah. Wait, go, well, TBS. he's been in a bunch of stuff since harry potter yeah. like very yeah. non-harry potter kind of stuff yeah. i mean i only bring up women in black because i think it feels to me like that was the movie that he did as like an adult after harry potter yeah that like it made a ton of money because i think he was in it right but not because the movie was harry good. potter yeah. horror movie yeah yeah and then i don't think Even after horns? that horns horns feels like swiss it army been man theatrical swiss film. army man you're right yeah. the a24 movie yeah uh, yeah Anybody, did you guys see that no i did yeah it's an interesting movie <laughs> yeah it, I, it's, it's it's a very interesting he movie. plays a corpse he's a corpse yeah yeah it's, it's another one that's been on my list to maybe bring on the show 
Yeah, it's a weird one. Yeah. I mean, I guess maybe that's, uh, I guess, where I was kind of coming at this from, is that Daniel Radcliffe's post-Harry Potter career has been uh, taking weird chances yeah. at, you know, just strange and unusual movies. Yeah, yeah. what does I he have to lose? It. Like, I appreciate that. He's doing some shit that it's not, you know, the Marvel machine or whatever else. You know, he's, yeah. he's doing what he wants to do, and I think that's kind of awesome. And if you think about it, like, this... Ugh. Topher Grace said that he has so much money from that 70s show that he's only going to do projects that like need a star boost to kind of like lift it up. Okay. And then if you go back and look at the stuff he's done since that 70s show, that's straight up not true. What Um, has he done? Well, but like he's done some of those weird religious movies and then he's done, but then he's also done like ensemble movies where he's playing like David Duke and shit. Like he's, it's, Uh, he's not doing that. That's what he said he was going to do. Black Klansman. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, so he's, he said he's doing that, but that's not what he's doing. But I feel like Daniel Radcliffe is actually doing that. Like yeah. he's picking movies that like that like his star power will bring like elevate and bring to but the that's mainstream. What I guess I like about him is that he Definitely. has he still has that star. He's like he's like he has the same kind of star power now that like Nicolas Cage does. Right. right. Like, like, kind of yeah, sense. I get that. They both are able to make these movies that they don't necessarily every once in a while one goes to theaters. A lot of them go to video or the festival circuit or mm-hmm. pop up somewhere. Yeah. But because they're in them, like, the, I mean, yeah, but, that's a star. That is star but power. Also, and you know? also like Nicolas Cage, to me, it's now become like a niche to him where it's like, yeah, I still know him as Harry Potter. I still watch Harry Potter. But if I hear that he's in a new movie, I'm like, oh, it's probably going to be weird and fun. Yeah. You know, like it's mm-hmm. it's like Very Nick true. Cage also. Yeah. like, Oh, it's probably going to be weird and fun. Yeah. He's got that same niche. He's living the dream, man. Yeah. Like loaded as fuck. You're always going to be loaded because the residuals are always going to be rolling in on Harry Potter. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, you can kind of just, like, the world's your playground. You can make whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Like, what, like I'm kind of surprised he hasn't, like, directed or written anything because he could if he wanted to. He might like, be yeah. on that route. I was going to say, he's yeah. just slow playing it at this point because he can. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, For he some can. reason, yeah. I always, like, equate him maybe because, in my mind, they're, like, physically similar to, like, Elijah Wood, who's also kind of in that same... Well, Elijah Wood, I don't think his star power has kind of diminished over time since Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. but he moved into producing yes. and his producing power is fairly high, you know, it's yeah. like because yeah. he's doing something, he can get some, you know, but financing kind of still doing for quirky movies. stuff too. Cause he has that passion. He loves horror. Like he's a horror Wilfred. guy. And I love that about him. Well, he got, that was, that show was entertaining as fuck. Stuff like, uh, the girl who walks home alone Mania. at night yep. and Mandy, mm-hmm. you know, those yeah. movies made. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he was, Oh, yeah. maniac! Yeah, you're yeah. saying. I mean, yeah. yeah that, well, that was great. But, yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, uh, well, he has that podcast too, where he talks about horror stuff too. It's I pretty just, infrequent. I literally but... just watched an Elijah Wood movie this week. A new mm-hmm. Elijah Wood movie. Oh yeah. wow! Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because he's been in what, like, uh, not Daniel isn't real. What was the other one where he? Uh, there was something very recent that it's kind of a psychological, you know, trippy kind of thing that he he did. I think I know what you're talking about. I don't know what it's called. Yeah, come to daddy. Uh, yeah, like come to daddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come to yeah, daddy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The one I just watched was uh, No Man of God. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so he does. It. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm not giving him the credit that he deserves. He's working. He is yeah. based on his name, able to get these. You know. So yeah. these guys are all functioning in the same level. Yeah, I think so. The, yeah, you know, I respect it a lot. I do too. Yeah. I like that they're doing. I mean, because he could have just become an asshole with a lot right. of money. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's nice to see him doing that. But I mean, we've talked about it all on the show. Is like we appreciate brand new content. Mm-hmm. And that's what these guys are searching for. They're looking for new content, which Original I really ideas, like. Yeah. Not based off existing IPs. Yeah. 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 And then the question is, uh, will people see it? And unfortunately, this movie, I mean, it was an indie release. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was. <clears throat> but it got torpedoed by the uh, COVID pandemic. Unfortunately. Um, who else is in this movie? Oh, we've also got Samara Weaving. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I was actually thinking about this today. Like, when did I first become aware of Samara Weaving? When did Three that's billboards. a good question. Yeah, three, three billboards. billboards. I was not aware of her there. I was remember. she's she plays Jonathan Hawk's girlfriend, but she's kind of spacey in the movie. There's the dinner scene in the restaurant where they go and talk to each other, and yeah. she fucking kills it in that movie. Mm-hmm. She kills it in most things she's in. She's pretty great. Yeah, you, no, she is good. Yeah, obviously, ready or not, she right. S- yeah, and those babysitter awesome. movies on Netflix. I think yeah. that's where I first became. I was aware like, of, that's like, probably where yeah. you first. Oh, Ash versus Evil Dead. Oh, she's got a little stretch of episodes oh, really? yeah. in that. In the yeah, later ready, seasons. ready or not was is definitely the, it for me. 
She's only got like a three episode arc. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I don't want to say too much. Yeah, no spoilers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not convinced her and Margot Robbie aren't the same person. Okay, I had that problem. They're very similar. They're very similar. <laughs> when Ready or Not <laughs> came out, I thought it was a movie starring Margot Robbie. They, <laughs> yeah, they like, look in that movie especially. <laughs> they, they look, look very identical. Similar. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, funny story about Samara Weaving. She has a Deathly Hollows tattoo that she tried very hard to hide. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that'd be embarrassing as fuck. Well. Throughout, the, throughout the production of this movie. And then one day they had to do a stunt that she was just so focused on she forgot about it. And Dan and Radcliffe was like, is that what I what I think it is? And she like flipped out. She's like, this isn't about you. Yeah. This is, I was from the books, okay? And she like flipped out. Because you have to just go straight into defending right. yourself right now. Like, you are not involved in this, this decision. This nothing to do with Never. you. That's so cringy. That's, <laughs> that's funny. My favorite story. That's pretty good. What is she? Uh, is she a New Zealander? Where is she from? She might be a New Zealander. Let's I, find I, I, I thought out. she was Australian, but maybe uh, she's maybe, New Zealand. Okay. I don't know. And you don't want to Once, confuse. But those I think two. you're confusing Margot Robbie because yeah. she's Australian. Maybe, probably. <laughs> okay. Um, so as Captain Google works, no, she is her. from Australia. What? Oh, they shit. are the same person. <laughs> <laughs> they are the same person. Have you ever seen Samara Weaving and Margot Robbie together in the same room? Samara Weaving's got. I could have, and they might. I wouldn't have known. I might have just thought I was seeing the same person twice. Oh, they could parent trap people all the time. Yeah, they really could. So this movie uh, takes place in uh, Guns Akimbo. What's Akimbo mean? Yeah, Akimbo. Akimbo. Yes, I do know what this means. This means is like when your limbs are slightly askew. Like if you if you're drunk and you just plop down in your bed, you're just laying there, limbs akimbo. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Okay. That's what Akimbo means. Wildly, uh, whatever, flung. Right. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Um, so it's called Guns Akimbo. Guns were wildly flung in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there was, well, I don't, do you want me to tell you where that came from? Where did it come from? Okay. So Jason Lee Howden played a video game back in the 90s called Blood 3D. Hmm. And it was like a one gun shooter situation, but there was a power up mode that would give you two guns for 30 seconds. And the power up was called Guns Akimbo. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah. Video games, eh? Makes sense. Yeah. Makes Do sense. tell. Video games <laughs> seem to be heavily influential oh. for the making of this oh, movie. Okay, Colin. Really? Did you break? Okay, I feel like Colin and I, for the first 15 minutes of the movie, were, on this, were in the same, like, I can't deal with this because i don't know about you colin i was getting major flashbacks to gamer and scott pilgrim in the first 15 yes. minutes and i was like oh no i can't i was like i can't do a like grosser version of scott pilgrim i cannot watch this movie and then when it made the turn i was like oh thank god did it make thank the turn into god. uh shoot 'em up territory was that because that movie was on my mind a lot well yeah. obviously because we did that on this yeah. show yeah. Yeah. but also another movie so i mean just if you haven't seen this movie trying to set the stage right it's like yes video gamey and um anybody seen that movie nerve with, uh, with uh, emma roberts and was it dave yeah. franco dave franco i remember yes. seeing trailers Constantly, but I never saw. Well, the aren't they doing I don't like, like dares for money and stuff yeah. like that? And it just so. keeps going well, on it's on a about. movie where there are the story. It's a similar is, premise. Yeah, there's movie. a group that chooses somebody and then makes them do these dares. It's broadcast. There's people betting on mm-hmm. it, and everybody's watching mm-hmm. these. You know, because this is what happens on the internet. We're all say, yeah. tapped into these like uh, illegal streams that uh, are underground. I watched three people die today. <laughs> um, <laughs> spot yeah. on. Well, and like the way that like this movie starts with like the spinning cameras around people on their oh, keyboards right. and like leaving comments. That is almost exactly a scene from gamer and gamer is a fucking terrible movie. I hate that movie and yeah i hate that movie too and like and the, the the camera work and like the kind of like filters and the music was all very similar to mm. gamer and i was like i Ugh. i can't take like two hours of techno music and ugly gamer cinematography yeah. i just can't we, and this is movie comes with a content warning because it's uh aggressively loud it's a hyperactive, I guess, ADD. Yeah. Uh, the colors are bold. <laughs> it is and a sensory the, overload. The camera is always yeah. spinning upside down and doing all these kind of crazy tricks. Um, yeah. So it is designed to uh, make you go nuts by the end of it. It brought mm-hmm. yep. to mind a movie that we watched called Detention. Fair. Ooh, I, you know, I wasn't thinking of that, but I understand why you made the connection. I, I would say this has, I would say this has only one narrative, so 
Thank God. It's got okay. that going yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. detention had it's like focused. 80. So <laughs> True. So there's this. But I get uh, what you're saying. It's yeah. a genre of movie that's basically really hyperkinetic uh, yes. and is uh, designed to be show offy. I mean, is that the only real reason that you're, you're doing that kind of, um, you know, uh, hyperactive editing? That's what I was trying you're to do. You're going out. inside bodies to see the x rays of like bones breaking when somebody punches them, which is taken from like the Mortal Kombat video yeah. games or those Jet Lee. There was a Jet Lee movie that did this. Was it Romeo Must Die? One of them. Like they did this already. Did they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I mean, so basically, we're just saying that it's a it's a it's a stylistic thing. It's yes. not really like you know. This very movie stylistic. is this is style. The movie. There yeah. you like, go. I guess, yeah. <laughs> this is like if you get a sheet cake. There's like an inch of cake, and then there's like six <laughs> inches of frosting. Oh, I thought you were gonna say there's six inches of sheet. <laughs> like were you going for a shit sheet type of kind of wow a okay. sheet cake yeah it's a sheet cake yeah that is the, that is such a dad joke Colin. i know sorry what's the premise of this movie holly <laughs> that's right you gotta, you gotta dig me out of this the dad the no, dead dad joke no, leave, no, okay. leave him behind holly yeah <laughs> Um, so basically we're centered around schism, which is a live streaming, um, fight club, basically like a fight to the death. Uh, two opponents are chosen and they have to find and kill one, one another, whoever. How are the opponents chosen? Against each other. Um, they're chosen. I, I think schism chooses. Them. Yeah. Schism chooses them. Um, I think th- I don't know if they they never really say like do you sign up or well and it like, seems like if you win you keep going until you die right right yeah yeah and I think they Radcliffe, kind of enlist people he says something about like psychopaths and criminals are chosen to be yeah. in the right yeah and then pitted against each other in like a gladiatorial kind of right you know, right live streamed by obviously schism has a control room somewhere with a bunch of monitors and they have drones out there and they have commentators right right. But then later on, which again, gamer. Later on, right. someone uh, someone makes a comment um, to Danny Radcliffe saying, "Like, oh, you joined Schism. Like, you can also sign up for it or oh, yeah. join it or something." I don't really know the connection there, but yeah, it seems if you got a rap sheet. You just like, hmm, yeah, uh, I qualify. Oh, do, do you think it's like a Suicide Squad thing where it's like you can serve the rest of your time in jail or you can join Schism and get <laughs> right? out early? That then, sounds like gamer. Yeah, that, gamer? that is gamer. Is that death- is gamer. Death race was that also because the new death race is streamed too, isn't it? Yeah, right, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, Oof, the new death race. All over the place. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so who is Daniel Radcliffe and how does he end up in this game? Yeah, so Daniel Radcliffe is just your you know average Joe. His name is Miles. He works for a uh, video game company. Um, but it's like one of those shitty cell phone games. Like, mm. you know, nut, this, this nut, was too real for like me. This was too much thing. like my the, real the life. Nut, this was like nut bus play. too. Nut bus. I know this is like the, the thing, like everybody thinks these triple A titles are like the big selling video games, but no, it is no. the phone yeah. games. And you know, yeah. where you're yeah. like, I'm t- storming the castle mm-hmm. and I've got to arrange my armies. Uh, those they, have, are yeah. they have paywalls. Yeah, yeah. Everything is behind a paywall mm-hmm. in those games. So yeah, he, uh, He's working this shit job. He's kind of, you know, lackluster in life. And he's also, in his spare time, an internet troll. So he's spending his time trolling uh, Schism. And they he, he strikes a chord. They get mad at him. <laughs> <laughs> and because of that, they decide to put him in the game. Right. Yeah. Beware so trolls. <laughs> this is the moral of the movie, right? I mean, Don't I guess troll. It's, yeah, it is. It's saying that, like, uh, you know, the... People who are trolling, it's like they're 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 threatening all this kind of violence. But when they're actually like, or I suppose, they're all talk, yeah, yeah. that you're all talking. And, and then when you're turn actually on you quick, yes, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so he is chosen for the game, but like, how do you get into the game? I mean, well, how does schism work? Well, you're kidnapped, and then um, guns <laughs> are bolted to your hands. In what the, in this case? In bolted this case. to your hands. <laughs> I I was sad we didn't get to see the chainsaws or nail guns options later yeah. on. I was like, I want to see chainsaw hands. I know. I know. How come they they didn't do? Wait, in uh, some of the videos, where uh, there were guys with chainsaws, oh, where they yeah. bolted to their hands. Well, was he uh, the first one who had like well, the later weapons? On, he's threatening to put someone else in the game, and he's like, "Are you a, a nail gun or a chainsaw hand kind of person?" Yeah, and that's when I was yeah. like, "Oh, are we going to see it?" And then we I know. didn't get to see it. Gonna, but chainsaws probably not the best option because if you run out of gas then you're fucked right yeah. right yeah. i was gonna say logistically and then you know just for the movie that'd be really difficult to do yeah <laughs> yeah that's yeah. heavy and cumbersome yeah and logistically would not work 
Exactly. Maybe in this one, unless you're exactly, Which is Bruce how you Campbell. have to think about this I was going to say, it would draw yes, comparisons <laughs> to, <laughs> to Army of it, Darkness, yeah. so probably not yeah, a great idea. exactly. Well, uh, Although well, this movie does not really hide all the other times that it's just on the nose. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. That's very true. <laughs> uh, so Radcliffe's character, he also has a uh, on-off relationship with a girl ca- called Nova. Mm-hmm. And uh, sorry, and, and Richter is the bad guy. Like uh, it's a nod back to Total Recall. Yeah, maybe. I was Richter say, yeah. is the bad guy who runs Schism. Richter. Who is he? Don't know. Okay, don't know. that's what I was going it's, for. Yeah, uh, don't we don't know. Don't know if it matters either. Yeah. <laughs> he's just a tattooed guy. Okay, yeah. uh, he's that's played it, by me. one of the cult members from Mandy. The, the, yes, yeah. that's yeah. Ned Denning. Is is Ned Denning. Okay, uh, and so, um, so what's going on with uh, uh, Daniel Radcliffe and Nova? I mean, I only ask because this is like kind of the B plot, right, right? Of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and this is the Scott Pilgrim kicks in, and I'm like, yeah. no, no, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> I already did this once. I'm not watching this same movie again. But then thankfully he was like, when he was like, oh, this isn't about getting the girl. I was like, whew. All right. Uh-huh. All right. All right. I can go forward to this movie now. But like, uh-huh. but when they met on the bench at the park and she had the dyed hair, I was like, oh, this is yeah. fucking oh, yeah. Scott yeah. Pilgrim. That's exactly what I'm like. <laughs> and even like they had the little like motion graphics popping up of the video game kind of like, um, you know, HUD screen. I was like, yeah. I, I've seen this movie and I'm not watching it again, but um, they're broken up. He's trying to win her back. Yeah, That's all there is to it. Right. Yeah. And then yeah. she is going to become involved in the thing that he's involved in. Right. Mm-hmm. And okay. So they, well, they kidnap and they knock him right. out because he offended somebody on the, the schism right. website. The bad guy, Richter shows up, they knock him out, and he wakes up, and all of a sudden he's got these guns bolted, yes, bolted, bolted to bolted his to hands. Him. And I like that they spend a significant amount of time showing him trying to cope and grapple with having to have guns for hands. Gun hands, yeah. That's a pretty big part of the movie, and I like that they spend time with it. Comedically, it's funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, the scene where Danny Radcliffe is trying to figure out how to pee with his gun hands <laughs> is... <laughs> That doesn't is matter. doesn't matter. That was a stunt dick, dick, right? That, that was a stunt dick, and knew that it. was yeah. and that was the moment that Daniel Radcliffe knew he wanted to do this movie. Was <laughs> reading that in the script. <laughs> <laughs> really? Right? Yes. Because like, because yeah, I want to do this movie because you're choosing these parts based on like I'd never get to do that. Right? <laughs> I'm Harry fucking Potter, damn That's it! This funny. is what I'm yeah. doing. I had, I, I was thinking choice. about how well done the prosthetics had to be to hold up through all of this and yeah. still like because like he's still trying to use his hands through the whole movie so these prosthetics are going through all this like flexing and bending and right. pushing up against stuff so good job special effects team yeah for yeah. real he uh I, I think like while this was happening this was like kind of it was interesting to sit in the room with you guys because there was some discussion about like well how would you do that? You know, so it did. It was working in that mm-hmm. regard where it was oh, like, yeah. you know, how you automatically. Yeah. I get put in that headspace. Like, how would I act? If I had guns pulled right, to my hands. Right. How would I put my pants on? Yeah. Well, especially how, cause like, how do you use your cell phone? Sean, you were like, said something about like the thumb and we, we like, but there's a close up of the thumb where you even see it's through like a bolt. It's bolted. Like his yeah. fingers are, they yeah. got it pretty good. I yeah. will say, cause yeah. it's pretty high Each up on the digit thumb. Is bolted. You cannot use that. Yeah. yeah. Like you could maybe get the tip of that thumb in there somewhere, but right. it's going to be real hard. But the nails stick out of his like hand, probably like a half inch yes. at least. So like you got some, something there that you can yes. grab. If you want to use the bolt sticking through your hand in that way. Yes. Yeah. Which bleh. Yeah, he yeah. seems to have a lot of problem with like uh, everything, including dressing himself and all this. So he's wandered around in a bathrobe and his slippers and mm-hmm. streets. Okay, but uh, that's fine, right? He's got guns attached to him. Now he's got to play a game. But like, what's the object of the game? So he has to kill the champion, Nyx, or she has to kill him. Mm-hmm. Okay, so tell me a little bit about Nyx. This is the primary... In- no, I don't even know if I'd say that she's the primary antagonist in the movie. Well, I guess. I think well, Richter is. Richter yeah. is, right? right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so she's basically like a Terminator-type character uh, that's seen, obviously, in a lot of video games. It's the one that shows up and like you, get, you just run from it, right? Right. Um, so, okay, this is the thing that bothered me because mm-hmm. this is the way that I watch movies, mm-hmm. right? 
we're introduced to Nixon like an opening. She's the main character that we see at the beginning when she's driving like a 77 fire Pontiac firebird. Mm-hmm. These guys are coming at her. She spins around, bam, bam, headshots, right? Right. And then we see her going through a room where she's able to like take out like every dude in the place with no problem because she spins around, she shoots up, then blah, all headshots. Then she confronts Daniel Radcliffe and can't fucking hit him at all. <laughs> that bothers right? me. Because yeah, you're like, you establish that this character is like a fucking dead shot. And then, of course, they end up. And because it happened twice, there were two scenes where they were like, she's like, bam, bam. And she hits everything but the dude. Yeah. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, you're just doing this because the plot has to go forward. Otherwise, right. we'd be done at this yeah, point. Yeah, I, got, I felt that a lot in this movie. Like, ah, it doesn't feel like they're, they just want to get to the end. But I don't know. I don't know. That's weird. Yeah. Especially because in that opening scene, she has a hood down over her eyes. She can't even see what she's shooting at, and she's hitting people. Yeah. Like yeah. she was driving a car blindfolded, basically, and good. shooting people. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Not when yeah. You're twenty feet away, and yeah, she had a minigun and couldn't hit that much. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I was like, what? Okay, so the rules here are kind of elastic right, you, I mean, and only you, apply yes. at certain. I was, yes. They only apply when they need to apply. Yeah, I was trying to do some math and see if maybe there was some sort of like emotional thing where she just didn't want to shoot him and wanted to let him go, but that doesn't. Well, it doesn't way. go that way. Yeah, the plot. So no. That you I can't mean, even make that excuse. So she's yeah. got a striking look. She's got like the perennially wet hair. She's got black over her eyes. She has no uh, eyebrows and she's dressed in leather kind of, you know, so mm-hmm. she does appear basically as a Terminator for the mm-hmm. first. I like it. I like the two look quarters of the too. movie. Mm-hmm. Probably she shows up and he's got to run. You know, mm-hmm. she he's trying to bargain with her. But her whole thing is that uh, she's been the champion of this game. And she's killed X number of people, and they will let her go uh, if she completes this mission and kills him before yeah, he it's kills this, her. It's the same plot as like The Dark Knight Rises. She thinks she's going to get a clean slate, you know? Yeah. Yeah. She's Catwoman. <laughs> Which always, that also amuses me because like all of the crimes that she's committing playing schism are broadcast and therefore public. Right. And so, right. like, like, you who, just added all these murders. Like, right. who lets Here. this go? Like, if the police say, yeah, we're just going to let it go, like, People aren't just gonna be like, "That's fair. That's yeah, fine." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, it's, it's you were pi- forced to do it's it. It's a pipe dream because she has nothing else to hold on to. I right? guess yeah. so. Isn't this, this also point. the plot of Suicide Squad? Yep. I mean, I thought about that kinda, while yeah. we were watching this movie. Which, like, <laughs> which so... Samara Weaving might be in because that might be the same person. I know, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, Radcliffe is set loose in the city. He has to run around, and uh, his primary goals are a survive and b, um, I guess. Well, he keeps trying to reconnect with Nova. What's the what's his plan there? Why does he need to to find her? I think he just wants help at this point. Yeah, because yeah, he can't put pants on himself. He can't. He <laughs> yeah. has, is asthmatic, and he needs his inhaler. We're also mm-hmm. seeing showing oh, yeah. that, like the because uh, this is in the, that explicit video game connection the inhaler is his power up we get power <laughs> yep. up music or a tone. What is that <laughs> from? Is there a specific game that that uh, I'm sure it's is from, from something, but okay. I don't know. You recognize it, it as yeah. the power up yeah. yes. tone. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so uh, in his way is basically the overlords, Richter, trying to control like what's happening. And there's also cops in the mix, too. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. There's there's cops that are after Nick's. Why are they after Nick's? Well, at this point, we don't know. Colin. She's a criminal. Colin. Yeah. We well, just, we just think, but we this- just think they're after her because she well, she escaped prison. There's that, true. and she's killed lots of people. That's so there's that. So cops would be after her. Yeah. This but there is, is a, there is a deeper reason, Colin. But the, this is the this is where the movie loses me a little bit. Is like so do the cop like because at one point Richter says that like oh who do you think owns the cops and implying that like schism is like either paid off the cops or like the cops just leave them alone whatever mm-hmm. but they're like. The relationship between the cops and schism, which like everyone seems to know what it is, it's a gl- like a sensation, like. So do the cops just look the other way on this? Like, is this like a purge situation where this is allowed? Like that area is kind of murky for me and isn't very murky. Yes. Yeah. Well explained yeah. in this movie. So. Yeah, yeah. They, they hit on it a little bit, but like the overall picture, they never really explain it. Mm-hmm. No, because yeah. the, the way that I took it by the end of the movie was that there were several police officers, at least one key one who enjoys schism mm-hmm. and is in communication direct communication with Richter so he mm-hmm. does have an inside man right. in the police force and is 
you know, able to execute a, a twist, you know, to get mm-hmm. us out of a narrative uh, problem. So um, I think we can we can spoil it for the folks. What is uh, why are the co- cops hunting Nix? One cop in particular is hunting her because she, she's his daughter, Colin. Mm-hmm. That's right. I almost bailed on this movie at this point. I'm not going to lie. Detect- I may have bailed on this the movie. Detective this point. No, it, well, but, but here's the thing. I thought the movie was going to follow that. Redeemed. Cop. It got redeemed. Yeah. I thought the movie was going to be like, okay, the cop and Daniel Radcliffe are te- teaming up now because he's got to get his daughter back. And I was like, if the, that becomes this movie, I am done. Yeah. And then it, I think it didn't. Was in the thank God. Of her thought, if that becomes. And then, yeah. And then I was like, oh, all right. All right. I'm back in. I'm back in. <laughs> because the guy's yeah. eliminated. It's the goofiest story. So like we're, we're, we are set up to think that the cops are following her because she's this mass murderer. And right. We can't catch her. Mm-hmm. But it turns out. Yeah. That she, we see earlier, like a little plot thread of this, mm-hmm. that she has uh, her weakness, right? right. Because uh, video game character. The, the I would way- say most people's weakness. <laughs> I was going to say it's yeah. fire. Exploding right. fireballs. <laughs> yeah. Specifically in this movie, her it's, weakness. It's but a yes. pretty legitimate fear. Yeah. 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 She has a fear of fire, like mm-hmm. most humans, you're saying, uh, and most living things. Um, except spiders, those motherfuckers, they run right. Anyway. Uh, Let them. Like Let them. Yeah. <laughs> Let them. Um, Let them scream. Mm-hmm. We get a little flashback where she's seen as a little girl in a car that explodes. And this is part of her PTSD mm-hmm. over fire. And later, it turns out that she's the cop's daughter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the cop was hunting Richter way back in the day. Mm-hmm. How long ago is this? I'm saying back in the day, but we're talking like 10 years right, or something, like, right? Something like that, yeah. Okay. And Richter like rigged the car with explosives and the wife and the other kid were killed. But right. the daughter ended up like because of that. She went to the insane asylum and then she broke loose. And now she's Nick's out on the street and he's trying to get her back or something. Yeah. He had recruited her. her. Yeah. He recruited. Well, according R- to Richter Daniel Radcliffe, her. according to Daniel Radcliffe's theory, uh, Richter recruited her so she wouldn't try and get revenge on him. So Solid he, theory. Mm-hmm. Which is not bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Solid Keep theory. your enemies close, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, did, were you guys expecting, because I was totally expecting a scene where like she takes a leather jacket off and her whole body's covered in like, b- like burn burn scars i was wondering like why wondering like that feels like it probably hit the cutting room floor but like that seems like narratively that's how you would how she would explain to daniel radcliffe who she was right yeah she'd like show him right. her burn yeah, scars yeah. and then You'd tell the backstory that. yeah right. yeah yeah but we Aww. get the backstory from the cop it's mm-hmm. a very ham-fisted scene where like they have they arrested daniel radcliffe there were a couple times where i was like uh, you know, the logic of the movie just didn't kind of work out later, obviously, because the cops have, you know, there's a guy in there who's, but there's a point where, uh, Nova is on the phone with him and she's like, you're being hunted by this girl. You've got guns stuck to your hands. Go to the cops, mm-hmm. you know? And I'm like, that probably actually would be his best, you know, course of action at this right. point. If right. he wasn't an idiot. Yeah, because he tries to do this. Yeah, and this, but he's an idiot. Well, how does that scene work out? Well, well this, got, the, but this scene, the scene that you're talking about, happens before this, oh, this moment. Happens where pretty like, early in the movie, you know, yeah. it's like at this. At the point I'm talking about, it's like that probably is the best thing to do. But earlier, right. what mm-hmm. happened? I mean, he finally leaves his apartment. And he's walking down the street and he sees cops and he's very excited because hey, police can help. And then he's just like, hey, hello, excuse me, waving his gun hands in the air. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, it's kind they of don't, starts our action at this point. They don't take it well. Yeah, no. No, nope. yeah. wouldn't. So that ends up. How uh, do you forget you have guns attached to your hand? I like, can just start <laughs> waving that shit around. Well, and like, I'm sorry. Any other time in America, if this happened, you'd be shot dead instantly dead. by the cops. Dead, dead, they dead. they dead. would this not tase is, you. This movie is over in a half hour. Yeah, <laughs> it sure looks like that was it. Well, they did shoot at him, but yeah. somehow because he's super nimble, which we find out is a characteristic that he has. He's very quick. Yeah, because even she comments on this. Uh, he's able to escape down an alley. Then he accidentally a- accidentally shoots one of the but cops. He, but he accidentally shoots the cops because he gets tased by them. They would just straight up shoot him. They wouldn't even bother with right. tasing him. Is what I'm saying. He's like, armed. They would shoot yeah. Him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. armed and waving his guns at cops. They would shoot him dead immediately. His guns are literally akimbo, yeah. Michaela. Yes. <laughs> That's right. That's mm-hmm. a high five right there. Thank mm-hmm. you. Um, and then, uh, yeah, then he ends up uh, finding Nova because they had arranged a meeting or right. whatever. And then he like flings himself into the window of her car. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the Samara Weaving character 
is coming. Nix is coming up with a rocket launcher. She just has weaponry because because it's a video game. And, and yeah. no, no one else in this park is thinks anything of this Terminator walking around with a, like a machine gun. Like it is, is it, weird. It's like these. It's just these. I know like every character in every movie is in their own little thing, but it's just like they're walking through a world where. No one sees them but the other people in this movie. Right. Like they say schisms like this underground fight club doesn't seem like it. Seems like it's happening in broad daylight everywhere. Well, there was a scene like I got like that was what they were going for because we see the all the folks who are like watching schism like in their, you know, uh, you know, the, whatever the underground, you know, um, um, what am I trying to say? Network of you know people watching the, on the computer. But at the end, that was the longest yeah, way to say the internet. Oh, the internet. Thank you, Jesus this Christ. Interconnected thing. The wires that connect our computers and on computer screens. No, what the not fuck do they that. Call? The thing about. Al Gore invented, right? Yeah, they're in their little hovels, or their basements where they're watching. Anyway, yeah. at the end of hovels, it, there Jesus. is a scene hovels. which also you know made me think of Nerf. There's a scene where you have the screen playing and there's like a thousand people in a park or something mm, and they're all watching cheering. this thing yeah. as it's, you know, and I'm like, I how just, underground is this? Right. Then? It's not underground. Don't call it that. It, I, I this just, is mainstream entertainment. Right. Uh, I want, I just want to say that uh, Halloween Resurrection did it first. Um, That's true. You, <laughs> Colin choked on his beer over that. Colin, yeah. Unfortunate. He was looking at me at the time. Um, yeah. yeah. You are correct. Dangertainment did it Danger-tainment first. Dangertainment did it first. Best? Uh, we're was still trying it to figure first? That out. When was Halloween Resurrection? Because it was a movie that nobody saw because of the September 11 attacks of 2001. It was called My Little Eye. It was supposed to come out on September 11th of 2000. Mm. Or no, that was, a, that was when the screening, the, the test screening happened uh, on that day. And it was was like but it's a house that's rigged up with uh, uh bradley cooper's in it uh what house it sounds like we with... need to do this it's on the freak a bad show Colin. movie actually yeah because i remember it was like there was ginger snaps and this and all like came out at the same time but it was a house rigged up and people were watching on the internet and making bets on sure and i'm like is this the first time that that happened Halloween nobody remembers resurrection this is 2002 i mean so. death race 2000 that's true. Okay, going back to yeah, you are absolutely correct. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> like, I mean, the idea is not new. It's just what is your twist on it? What is your variation? Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. So it's not that underground. Uh, it seems like everybody knows that this thing is happening. Uh, so there's drones following them around wherever they go. Everywhere that they go, there's always people going like, "Hey, you're the guns of Kimbo yeah, guy." Everyone watches this. <laughs> yeah, it's like American Idol. <laughs> yeah. Nova doesn't take very well to this uh, news because apparently when uh, even though there's a bunch of hysterical stuff that happens where, you know, I'm just going to keep my hands in my pockets. Can you get my inhaler? This is give me the inhaler. Also, where this I I know, again, this is a heightened movie and weird things are going to happen. But come on, just I feel like we're elongating a movie where we I mean, he eventually tells her, hey, I have I have guns uh, bolted to my hands. Like, just tell her right there. Let's not have a five minute scene getting through all this stuff. It's all about communication, Sean. Uh, I, just, I agree. Just like, like get to it. Like you got someone who's shooting you. Like right. you know. But I mean, I don't know why even, if I should but, try and argue the logic of this movie <laughs> as it as I'm having a schism with my logic. Yeah. It doesn't but take place even, in the real world. It doesn't. I mean, so you can't. Yeah. Yeah. Even with that five minutes of lead up, she still has a horrible reaction to it. So yeah. like, what could he have done differently? You know well, I'm saying I mean, he like, could have. He could have just been like, okay, here's the thing. Some people kidnapped me and they bolted guns to my hands. Before I'm, you pull them out of your I'm pocket. going to pull right. them out and show you, but you have to not freak out because I'm not going to hurt you. But right. there are guns bolted to my hands. <laughs> I think. Instead, she's this is, um, a guy she's. Uh, okay, but, it, but. They know schism exists. Like, this is the world <laughs> they live in. Right. Shit like this happens. But here's. I think this movie is trying to say something more than that. I think this movie is trying to s- point out how certain white men react when they're rejected. I think it's because he's broken up with his Mm -hmm. ex-girlfriend, goes to meet up with her, and he shows up with guns. Yes. This is not Uh, something we are unfamiliar with. Right. He goes to his work after he's been bullied to fuck and threatened to be fired multiple times with guns. Right. This movie is making a statement on how white men react when they are rejected, whether professionally, romantically, whatever. I agree that's with that statement. That's very I, good. That yes, I like that. Be, yeah, that could be there. He is, a, know, he is a disgruntled ex-employee when he I, shows up at his job with guns bolted to his hands. Yeah. Yeah. And what's, he is a tr- he's an internet troll. Yes. All right, you're putting, all right, you put together everything I didn't even... Yeah. Do you think it's funny that I was thinking that too, but these two weren't thinking that? <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, I am sorry, nodding and shrugging I'm my sorry. shoulders. Holly, Holly, I wasn't thinking about it. I was playing with my guns yeah, and yeah, talking yeah, to people yeah, down the yeah, internet. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I don't know how I missed it. But my, no, you're very right. Because my whole thought during this whole workplace scene is like, dude, I know you think you're in the right right now, but you are not. Yeah. You are not. Like, yeah. I, I already see the headline on CNN right now. Like, disgruntled software engineer shows up with two pistols to work and shoots up workplace, I was you know? The same thing. So, so it's taking advantage of the, all those circumstances that he would wander into. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, Well, I mean, it, what's the comment that it's making, I guess, is the question. Is it just like using that as like an illustration of, you know, these are the situations that we associate with these things? Or is it saying something? Or is it just making a joke out of it? Yeah, what, what, are, what are those things leading Cause, to? Because I guess it's supposed to be these are humorous. I don't know if it goes any farther than that. Okay, you know what I'm sure. saying? Like, I think that to. might be where it stops. Because it's used, maybe it is using them just as like these are punchlines for like a, a yeah. humorous right. sequence, you know, or something right. like that. Uh, it's, she, kind of, it's kind of using this imagery as like how ev- how the rest of the world would perceive this situation. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And she, of course, shows up at his workplace and like and white men kills kind of everybody. Just mm-hmm. Yes. Um, <laughs> or don't see it. Yes. <laughs> yes. They also get a lot of mileage out of. Uh, Remember our talk about shower scenes? <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What, Hot for you guys, terrifying for us. Mm-hmm. Right. There's a you missed that one on the dress to kill episode. Yeah. Uh, there's a, a lot of uh, needle drops of like techno versions covers of uh, you spin me right round. Okay, I'm gonna straight version. say it. I think this score is uh, there. The soundtrack is bad. I think this is a bad soundtrack. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Well, it's this is the worst version of Ballroom Blitz I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a Wayne's World did it way say? better. It, it, well, that was well, the yeah. original well, one. Yeah. I think this is no, like that some, was a cover. Tia Career covered. Oh, Ballroom right, Blitz right, right, right. is my yeah. sweet. Yeah. 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 And I I just, I don't like the techno music. I don't like how relentless it is. I just, I need a break from it. And I don't like the covers in this movie. I don't think they're I w- good. No, I, yeah, I agree. I would have liked if they had just used the original songs. Just use the regular Ballroom Blitz. It's a great yeah, fucking I love song. That song. Yeah. yeah. And it's high energy. Yeah. yeah. I yep. didn't mind Wild One. I didn't that mind. one was fine. The cover yeah. was okay. I didn't mind that. Some of them aren't used. Like well in the sequences that they pop up in. No, I mean, the to never me, surrender at the yeah. end is like that was awful that's, that totally tone to that's the, totally super out of the Yeah, movie. so it's not like you know it's like oh I like this song, but then you're just like concentrating on the song and it's not working well. But yeah. in the movie, never surrender was a terrible choice. Yeah, that was my problem. Well, terrible choice. With f- five bars of super freak just to underline the fact that a girl is having a cocaine freak out. Like yeah, that, that was that bad. Didn't work that either, was bad. I didn't think mm-hmm. yeah, I didn't love it, but it really took me out when when uh. We just said, what, what song was it? Never Surrender. Never Surrender. Yeah. 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 That really took. And yeah. like, I feel like there is a lot of better. I feel like we could come up with a better soundtrack. Like, but maybe really we trying. couldn't afford those ones. Maybe we had yeah. to settle for like. I'm just know, like, if you're, if you're paying for Ballroom Blitz, there's so many good versions of that song. Yeah. And they found the worst one. Mm. But yeah. like, uh, it took all the energy it fit, out of it. It fit like the. It, fit with the techno thing that they were doing maybe yeah maybe know. maybe this be, is me and i just I don't like say, techno music you know don't like it yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. maybe it works for some people and maybe for this type of movie it works and maybe it's just not my personal preference you know yeah well he uh the the nova character is uh ingratiated into the plot because as things escalate uh mm-hmm. we basically have a series of near encounters where Nix shows up and almost kills Daniel Radcliffe. He finds out mm-hmm. how he's being tracked on his phone. Mm-hmm. His buddy at work like disables the tracker so she can't find him. Uh, then he meets up with Nova. But of course, somehow, even though Nix can't find him, the drones are following him all over the place. So all she has to do is really call tune somebody for, or tune in <laughs> and hey, she know you? where he is. Um But Nova is kidnapped because this is the stakes are being raised, right? right? Why did they kidnap Nova? To like hold her hostage. Well, yeah. Same. Well, um, <laughs> but his motivation for him to right, stay in the game. So right. Not, they're oh, like, he's going to leave. Town, right. They're yes. like, you can't go to the cops. You can't leave town. We have your girlfriend. Right. He was going right. to leave town. That was part of the rules. You couldn't leave town. Yeah. And I was hoping that they would have some sort of suicide squad thing where like you blow up if you leave the city limits or something. That's <laughs> yeah. what I was hoping you gotta, for. You got to put that collar. Right? Yeah. 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 Right. Right. You yeah. cross the city limits yep. and you explode. Or inject poison into him. And yeah. Yeah. You kill him mm-hmm. at a certain time. But in this case, you have your girlfriend. Girlfriend's going to, you know, be killed uh if you don't you know complete the mission mm-hmm. which is kill nix or she kills you but it turns out that these two kids like figure out a way around this because uh daniel 
Radcliffe gets the information from the cop, her dad. Mm-hmm. Her dad, uh, yeah. Right? He knows who she is. Right. So, so he pieces surprised. it together. Yeah. He's like, okay, so I, this is my theory of why Richter recruited you. And he's like, okay, the only way out of this is if we team up. Yeah, the yeah. team up movie. <laughs> Which I like the team. I like the I mean, team this was, up. the team up was the best part. I like the team mm-hmm. up of yeah. the movie. Mm-hmm. And the so we all expected the team up, though. Oh right? yeah, okay, for sure. When we go into this movie, like seeing these two people, and you're like, well, it's obvious at some point they're going to team mm-hmm. up because right. we have a third bad guy, Richter. Mm-hmm. This is very true. So right. we're going to go that way. So this is the moment that it happens. If they'd only done it a half hour earlier. Uh, Why? <laughs> because well, this I mean, what more would you do? Long. <laughs> no, just to cut out some of the repetitiveness in the middle of the movie. If nothing else. What's repetitive about the middle of the movie? Well, this again, this is just my uh, personal choice, but I mean, there's a lot of gunfighting with no particular... It's a gun-fu movie. It is, it is, but I don't, uh, I don't like gun-fu movies. Like, I think it's not only that, but I know the filmmakers are just doing it as a stylized practice in, until we get to the end of the movie. Because nothing's going to happen to these characters in the middle of these gunfights that are happening. These infinitely long gunfights that happen. Even though he only has 50 shots in each shot. That's established. Let me ask you a question, because I'm curious that the answer is going to be, how many times was Daniel Radcliffe shot, uh, excluding the uh, bulletproof vest thing that the two, you know, come up with Mm -hmm. uh, to later to the ruse. So it looks like she shot him and the game's over. So then they can actually go get the bad guys. How many times was he shot in this movie? A lot. Like, actually shot. Shot in the arm. I think five. Shot yeah, in the it was a lot. Five. It was, yeah, I, I thought it was six, so okay, we're yeah, in the same. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, had, yeah he had a wound on his leg at some yeah, point. Five or six. Well, and he even him. said when he got hit with the bulletproof vest, like, this fucking hurts. I feel like I'm bleeding in, internally <laughs> is what he said. Yeah. 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 I did like the one time and yeah. I had to go back and redo it. <laughs> that was good. Are you not yeah. listening to me? I think <laughs> yeah, we haven't really hit on it, but this movie's actually pretty funny. It's pretty funny. Yeah, it's they really have some funny. really good lines on this. I wanted more of it. I don't think they're yeah. given time to settle on these characters being funny in these situations. Like, they do it. It's rapid fire. Like, the yeah. rest of the movie, it's very rapid fire. Yeah. But I want I want to stick with them in those moments a little yeah. bit. Yeah. They have good it's chemistry together. They I, do. Do. I like yeah. them. They this do. is why I wanted yeah. the team up earlier, because I'm like, I like them together. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I know it's we're not going to get a lot of this, because it happens quick, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess you're, you're right. As we've been talking about this, maybe the uh, the listener hasn't gotten the idea that this movie is a comedy, right? Yeah, it's it an is. Absurdist... Yeah, it's definitely a comedy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Comedy, yeah. So, sorry, that's the movie that you're watching. It's not like, you know... That. hardcore action movie <laughs> it's a comedy well i suppose you have to assume it's a guy who's got guns bolted to his hands right. yeah. it's a comedy yes um so where are we we'll see this is where i get lost <laughs> well, i was gonna say our... we haven't talked about reese darby and his role in this movie oh it's, shit oh, it's, right. it's yeah. not oh, yeah. it's not super consequential to the plot but it adds it's to funny. the gross <laughs> and the funny yeah <laughs> oh the hot, uh, the hot dog. Fuck. Not since nothing but trouble has a hot dog been so <laughs> disgusting. Like, well, Why is this one so gross? It I falls in a months. dirty alley and it's eight months old and it's covered in mustard. And just the way, because they, they make Daniel Radcliffe, you know, how he's got to do everything with guns. Yeah, they he's make like him fumbling with it, trying fumb- to pick it up from the asphalt and it's... Oh, yeah, re- re- it's, it's dead quiet, except for the... The, the plop. Yeah. I hope you heard that. <laughs> you did, yeah. That, yep, too. It came that was through. disgusting. That's, <laughs> that's the hot dog in this movie. I want you to feel that disgust that we have. I couldn't look at it. I can't watch it like that. I'll watch 50 Dudes Get Blown Away, Yeah, but I will not watch him eat it. But you could watch dog. Nothing But Trouble. I didn't watch that either, I don't think. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I covered my eyes for that one, no, too. No, we're traumatized by hot We have PTSD for hot dogs. Yeah. Like, we all kind of like looked away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. can't do it. Well, and the mustard... Oh, just made it that much more gross. Yeah, most of the time. But Re- Reese Darby is a homeless crackhead. Who's Reese Darby? Just for those, he's who- uh, Flight of the Concord. So what we do in the shadows? He's like a New Zealand yeah. kind of staple he's the actor narrator in um, uh, Jumanji. Jumanji. He's the yeah. yeah he's the yeah. main guy. Welcome Jumanji. to Jumanji. Yeah. Jumanji. Yeah. yeah. You know his voice. If you, you don't know, know his yeah. face, you know Reece his Darby. voice. Yeah. He's so funny. He. If you haven't seen Fly of the Concords, go watch it. It's hilarious. He's the, the funniest part of it every time. I love He's it. the head werewolf in What We Do in the Shadows. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay. And who is he in this movie? A homeless crackhead. Yes. <laughs> and he's... A self-proclaimed homeless crackhead. You want to do some crack? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. His well, name is Glenjamin. 
Glenjamin. Glenjamin. That is such like a Reese Darby joke. Like he definitely came up with that. His name's Glenjamin. That is that's <laughs> basically funny. serves as like a he's a plot point. He keeps coming up. We keep seeing him throughout the movie, which is kind of like an anchor, right? Mm-hmm. An anchor character because he is the one who really. At the beginning, I, or I, when Daniel Radcliffe meets him, is able to help him, I guess, like do a costume change because mm-hmm. you're like, well, mm-hmm. how's he not going to be in his bathrobe for the whole movie? Right. Because he met Reese Darby, the homeless guy who helps him get into his clothes. He, and he then, clothes him. He feeds him. I mean, come on. Yeah, because we were all like, <laughs> how is this going to work? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. And then, uh, I mean, really, then we check in with Reese Darby. Uh, so in the video game world, he's he's the health, right? He's like the when you find the chest. Y- yeah, yeah. He's like right? he's like your save point where you yeah. go back. You like yeah, you, you sleep in the bed or him, you yes. eat the yeah. food. And what yeah, are yeah. you buying? Yeah, <laughs> you <Yep>. trade. Okay. <laughs> he's like, I've got some cool things for you, stranger. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah he's like. Yeah. I have a yep. machine gun for you. Don't they get the clothes out of a Goodwill donation bin? Yes. Uh, yes, yeah. Yes. I mean, He's wearing two different shoes. Yeah. I do like when they keep cutting back to Reese Darby at the end of the movie after they've established that he's not watching anything. Right. Oh, love they it. They cut back to that's, him like three times. I'm like, fantastic. he's not watching a thing. That like his fantastic. TV is broken. Yeah, his yeah. TV's broke, is, but he's, but he's commentating yeah. on the action. Right, but he's funny. tripping on crack, so oh, he's right. seeing so something. Funny. So. He's very, he does. He can. I don't know if it's digital, but he seems like he's able to do that thing with his eyes. Yeah. He can cross them. Mm-hmm. Very it, well. It, it's very cool. Oh, it's great. He's very mm-hmm. funny. Well, we lead into the third act of this movie with the team up because now, right. obviously, her goal is to kill Richter, the guy who killed her family, right. and now has killed her father. Yes. Uh, his goal is to rescue Nova. Mm-hmm. And so the two of them team up and uh, go to uh, Schism's headquarters. Mm-hmm. And they just walk in and start shooting everybody. And I was like, wait, how do they know where the hell it is? Um. Well, they get taken there. Yeah, because Danny Rod, the she she pretends to kill Danny Radcliffe. He's wearing the bulletproof vest underneath his his shirt. Mm-hmm. She shoots him. He stays there until they come and pick him Everyone up and take him back to headquarters. They put him in yeah. a body bag. The and body, him there. I got yeah. up to get a beer at that point, and then they <laughs> yeah. were outside the door, and I'm like, "How the fuck do they yeah. know where yeah. it is?" So this yeah. is an ingenious he, plan. He's literally in a body bag in the back of the van, and then when they open the van, he shoots him, and he's there. Yeah, yeah. okay, mm-hmm. yeah, there you go. And then, and then they, she follows him. Yeah. 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 Right, and do they uncover uh, uh, even a greater like what is the bad guys Richter's like great grand scheme that we have to stop now? Worldwide schism. Mm-hmm. Which is basically he wants to open a fight club in every city in the world. Right. Yeah. And we have to stop that from happening. And so that For leads as much us- as this is broadcast, I don't think it's possible. Right? Doesn't seem mm-hmm. like it, but again, there's because it's, it's very, happening in this yeah, movie. So. I mean, yeah. you know, murder. Last time I looked, there's uh, an illegal thing that you probably don't want your face like broadcast on because right. then people are like, Oh, it's that guy. We got his cell phone and whatever, and ping him. Uh so then this leads to the tense uh final chapter. Of uh, the movie, which what was happened? it tense? Was it? <laughs> what happens? I forgot. Well, which which part are we? Which part are we at? Oh, now they, they, so they have breached the uh, the schism HQ. Right. They killed all the dudes in a big like shootout, you know, mm-hmm. Matrix style, only mm-hmm. with like red and blue lights and it's and well, bad I, techno. <laughs> okay, well, bad techno and what's her name? I was gonna say they've been, lost they haven't, they haven't they haven't killed them all yet because she kills them all basically sacrificing herself right. so that Miles can move forward and kill Richter. Mm-hmm. Oh right, that does happen yep. next. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. After yep. they go in, yeah. Right. Yep. So feel... she gets her middle finger cut off. She yeah, does. she gets her middle finger because there's a boss, the, the the lower boss fight with yeah, the dude right. who yeah because the schism guys are really willing to sacrifice all the people who work for them. It's a bad mm-hmm. corporate mm-hmm. structure. Oh, it really. You is. don't want to work Step there. Step on the little guy. That's yeah. the other thing. That's why I won't go worldwide. Never mind the murder and. All this. Yeah, the, the yeah. corporate structuring bad, will yeah. not transfer, especially they, European. No. Terrible employee appreciation, never, never, none never. whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, they um, kill one guy, and they're like, "You got to stream it," you know. Which uh, right. kind of like, you know, are they? It felt like they're see, they're setting up some kind of backstory or psychology for Richter, but the movie never explains it or explores it. But that he always wants to be recording. Well, I mean, it's. I mean, it, it's just like Buster Rhymes and Halloween well, Resurrection. Like it's, it's a it's exactly. a fucking commentary on social media and you know the entire world. We're all on our phones. We're all recording everything instead of experiencing life. You know, people record tragedies instead of helping people. Yeah. It's it, you know, we see that this in this, this movie too. Life. Yeah, at one point, Daniel Radcliffe actually turns to the viewing audience and chastises them for watching mm-hmm. and this laugh. thing. And we we see yeah, everyone everywhere is laughing and like yeah. fuck you, dude, and all this 
other shit. You know, like yeah. humanity's doomed. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. But Richter's whole thing, his motivation, it seems to me, is he's like, because I guess he explicitly says it later in the movie, is that murder is art. Right. And he uh, shoots a guy and the brain matter splatters on the wall. Mm-hmm. He's like, that's my Jackson Pollock. But I don't know. Mm-hmm. That I don't just know, they seems don't like him... a kind of a, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, everybody always goes with like murder is art. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I say. It's say not nowadays. art if it's if, it, if you're actually doing it. Uh, representation of it is art. Sure. Doing it for real is murder. murder. <laughs> just murder. <laughs> yeah. 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 Did you guys notice the name of Nix's gun? Kindness. I love it. She what kills, kills him with kindness. Uh, yeah. <laughs> love it. I saw that and I was like, yeah. that's smart. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. Thank you for not pointing that gun at me. Oh, oh, you're okay. That's fine. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> it was. We funny. did get to the sacrifice of, um, what is her name? Nix. 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 I keep forgetting yeah, her name. She Which, uh, blows herself up. She does. I don't like this. I what? like it. Okay, well, this is good. There we okay, go. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Fight. <laughs> Stop it. I will win. I'm, well, probably, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'm fast. I'll run to you. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't, I wanted more for the character. I thought she went through so much and all that stuff. I think she should have uh, killed um, Richter. Because that, I thought, I thought that would satisfy her, her narrative arc. Yeah, I don't think like, this she is. She kills to, the guy, you know. But yeah, I've seen that so point. many times. I know yeah, I have I too. Think- I think I this agree. works because, you know, she makes that little speech about how, you know, you know how I've survived because, you know, they didn't deserve to kill me and mm. all that stuff. And then so obviously she's the one that kills them, right. but she kills herself in the process, you know, mm-hmm. and we know how this works. Once she kills Richter, like that's it for her. She has nothing else after that, Very true. Mm-hmm. you know, so this is how she had to go. Yeah. She's in control of her destiny exactly. this way. Yeah. So. Because the movie misses, like, I guess the whole thing that you would kind of pair uh, Radcliffe and Nix up that somehow together they would find salvation and move past this together. But I, I never, it's not this but movie, it, that's I guess, not this yeah. movie. But, that's yeah, not I, what I never for. get that from her character. Like, the whole time you see that there's still, you know, an ounce of humanity in Daniel Radcliffe. He's still freaking out the whole time. She's gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's so there's true. there's no redemption for her. What does she like, have to live done. for? Yeah, right. she's done. Yeah. Whereas yeah. He, just, he has a hope after revenge. this. revenge. He yeah. does have a well, hope, a- but we also get that it's not necessarily dashed, but a truthful ending, I think, where, where he says, uh, why, you know, when your girlfriend, ex-girlfriend watches you uh, uh, pistol whip a dude's teeth out. Um, doesn't give her a, a raging lady boner. It actually gives her PS- PTSD. Right. So, and the, that whole thing happened. Right. So. I like Michaela said earlier. I appreciated this about the movie. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. about getting the girl. Right. Yeah. yeah. But that, but that, that ending scene bothered me a little bit because I thought he was going to die when he was like, "Oh, I was bleeding out," yeah. you know. And I was like, I "Yes, do it. Commit yeah. to like, it. That's a lot kill him." Yeah. I was like, "Do it. Kill." And then they don't. And I was like, "Come on. Why are you backing off no, now?" I'm not even t- entirely sure what the ending is supposed to. I mean, I guess I understand It what feels it like a reshoot, doesn't it? It feels like a tack on. It does feel it like feels it does feel very like a, yeah. reshoot. The it really ending does. sees him like cleaned up, he got the guns off and he's like going to go off and uh event he He's now his life's mission is to go and well, you know, get you know, schism, schism all didn't over really the world. stop after Richter. It kept right. going, you know, different versions. But he's like, but we know where they live. And I'm like, but how do you know that? Yeah, he got the because he knows how to stalk people online. That's <laughs> very true. But he got the information from the desk when they stopped at the computer in schism's thing. Mm-hmm. They grabbed the the uh, tablet and took it with them. Gotcha. Um, I think the, <laughs> speaking of tablets, um, this, uh, like we said, there's some very good jokes in here. When Richter is giving his impassioned speech. Like we have your oh we have your we girlfriend have on the on the iPad on yeah. the iPad first is first he, <laughs> Danny Radcliffe thinks he's talking live to him he's like it's pre recorded asshole yeah like, that's great which is, which is funny <laughs> it's a the, video <laughs> right but at the end of it where he's like all right put a filter on that and make me look good I may have done it over the top like, yeah, that was funny. like that's how <laughs> yep. every one of those because nobody edits and that's how the yeah, internet works and nobody ever cuts really those funny. points off there's some pretty funny <laughs> stuff on here and you know this is uh uh. Yeah, I'll say that. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Well, maybe. but man, I I want an ending, uh, a fake out ending where it's like, oh no, I actually died, and then it devastates me. That's why I like Odd Thomas so much. Like, 
I like the fake out of like, oh shit, no, they actually died. I thought they made it. And then like, I like to leave the theater with that devastation. And this movie, this movie like was like, me, yeah. I like to be ruined when yeah. I see movies. And this movie was like, yeah, I bled out an ungodly amount, but I'm fine. Yeah, but I'm like, like, he has like a heavenly vision of reuniting with Nova. Yeah. And then it's like, no, that didn't yeah, actually happen. Yeah. But he's still fine anyways. Yeah, I know. That's so they I could get kinda, back together. Yeah, so what's the point? In the sequel. Yeah, Guns like of too. this. This ending felt very ta- tacked on reshoot, yeah. especially since I mean, throughout the movie, as uh, Daniel Radcliffe's character is like, I'm pretty sure he's vegan, uh, and he's also like against violence. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's a complete flip to the end of it. Like, it kind of would have been funnier. Again, this is we've seen it before, but mm-hmm. like if he'd gone back to his kind of nice lifestyle. But also still shot people. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that was the last thing he did. It's kind of like the exclamation point of the thing. <laughs> no, it's like, no, I'm I'm nice and everything. But if it comes down to it, he just yeah. he'll blast a dude. If Doesn't he, he look to. significantly richer at the end of this movie right? too? Yeah, like, yeah. Wait, what is that all about? Right, yeah. like, I was yeah. wondering that too. I was like, why is he rich now? Yeah, he has a nice car and a nice suit. And I was like, what? What? I was like, what is happening right now? I yeah. don't understand this because we didn't say that winning the game actually got you money, and no. he's killed the infrastructure behind the game. So, but now he wants to kill more people. Just yeah. because yeah. like he had no purpose before now he does. Yeah. Just kill him and let the movie be done. Just say and then I bled out there on the rooftop. Yeah, Boom. Yeah. Credits. Because like, we've already killed Richter. And, yeah. You know, in that at that moment the game is over. You, yeah. You've yeah. Yeah, Smart Weaving's go. gone, so most of the inter- interesting stuff is out of yeah. the movie. Mm-hmm. That won't be around for the mm-hmm. sequel. Just kill him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well that's uh I think we've come to the end. Now we need to find out what you guys think of this movie. Right. Right. That's the important thing. Uh, so we're going to do that. But before we do that, we're going to answer some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. How many shots do you think he could take? I think Igor could take like a M, you know, one of those Gatling guns. Does he just like? Is he like the blob where he just like absorbs them? Yeah, I he think, may or may not be alive right now. I think it's more like Death Becomes Her. Like he could take a shot through the stomach, <laughs> and her, but they got to rebuild it somehow. Right. A little spackle. Yeah, right. like in House of Wax. You just like right. The, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, okay, so we want to let you know how you can join in on this interactive portion of our show. By following along on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter at Sat Freak Show. You can email us Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh about well, actually, first we have a review. Uh Uh-oh. crazy Star Wars fanboy writes in and says, uh, horror movie fanboy on Twitter here to say, I've really been loving this podcast. Nice positive review of Friday the thirteenth, part six, Jason Lives. It was a great episode. Oh, thanks. thanks. Thank you. That was a fun one. I know. Thank you very much for listening. We appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, about tonight's movie, Guns Akimbo, Robin Linneman Silverberg writes in and says, well, now I have to think of another movie for listener month in January. <laughs> oh, I love that people are already thinking ahead. <laughs> it makes me happy. Yeah, did this make the list last year? I, I think, think it did. I think it was suggested okay. last year. Yeah. I think so. uh, B-Movie Pulsar Vault says it's a ludicrous plot Made to look like a video game, starring a clearly having the time of his life, Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah, this was right in my wheelhouse, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. Glad to see Daniel and Elijah Wood have both earned enough cash to make ridiculous fun (laughs) movies these days. I agree. We need more people like that in Hollywood, honestly. I like it. Monty Montague writes in and says, I don't know if this movie was good or bad. All I know is I loved it, and the people I watched it with did not. (laughs) <laughs> that's unfortunate uh travis legler says harry potter dropping the elder wand and wanting to go full metal jacket hmm okay i haven't seen this but i have a feeling like so many times before the freak show will talk me into it i mean i don't know what this episode sounds like if you haven't seen this movie you know <laughs> yeah. like yeah. i wish i, I kind of wish he'd Busted out a wand at some point, like that would have been like <laughs> no. Live in this universe. Let the man be someone other <laughs> yeah. than Harry Potter. Yeah, I guess that's well, fine. Let him be let him Daniel Radcliffe and not <laughs> Harry sure. Potter. Yeah, actor. Move yeah. on. Uh, Michael Whitaker says I liked it, but seriously, makes me question Daniel Radcliffe's career decisions. Why? Nah, I like his career. He I can like do it. whatever the fuck he wants. Yep. He uh, could never so. work another day in his life if he wanted to. Yeah, so. he's doing interesting things. 
Adam Kaler says, uh, guns akimbo from start to finish. I thought it was a blast. No pun intended. It was a fun <laughs> ride. One thing I thought while watching it was where did Samara weaving come from? She seemed to pop up in a bunch of movies in a short period of time. Guns akimbo, the babysitter ready or not. And she even showed up on Ash versus evil dead. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see what she does next. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Like it's all coming yeah, around I like her. full circle here. Yeah. I like that she does genre stuff too all yeah. the time. Yeah. I really like that. I think that kind of makes her like a new horror. What was you know, the personality? What was the movie with Scott? Scott Young? No, um, the guy from Walking Dead. She was in a movie Severance. We did we mention that? No, that wasn't it. Was uh, it I don't know what or, this movie is. Uh, Hold on. Uh, Violence know. or it's, it's Mayhem? Mayhem. I think it's called Mayhem. Yes. Is that her? Shit! I saw that, that movie. Is, I didn't even register believe, that was her. I believe that's okay. The movie. Let me, you keep wow. Going. Well, there you go. Our, um, uh, last week we watched a movie called Eight Legged Freaks. Oh, Adam Kaler write, wrote in again. He said, just finished this movie, getting cocooned by spiders and having to wait for it. And fear is truly terrifying. No amount of therapy is going to get someone past that. If having to choose between being taken out by a mine explosion or giant spiders, mine explosion every time. Oh, hell yeah. Well, yeah. Like and he the says, of that movie. Yeah. yeah. He <laughs> says, uh, was it me or did the tone shift two thirds into the movie to feel more like gremlins? All the spiders started making goofy noises and yeah. started acting yeah. more comical, it seemed. Yeah. yeah, it was weird. Yeah, that's definitely what they were going for. I think we yeah. brought that up we on did. the yeah, episode. Yeah, we saw that, too. Yeah. Uh, Grant <laughs> we understand if you couldn't get to that far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A few audio issues in the past episodes, but hopefully we're doing now yeah, Those spiders fixed. literally go, wee! Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, which I'm all for if you're going to make a giant spider movie, but I mean, apparently not. For last week's, you're not all for it because you. Well, no, no, I'm all for it if it's <laughs> if it's no, if it, no. if there's that more movie. than that. I guess yeah. is what I should say. Uh, Grant Parrish says, "Isn't Kari Wurr in Beastmaster 2? Sean, hint, hint. Th there, I saw the th picture. There's how you put her on the wall. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Uh, all right, we got to wait a couple years, but we'll get there. <laughs> All right, about our episode the week before was Dressed to Kill. Uh, Teresa Ann wrote in and said, Funny rumor I heard about the little girl who stares down Angie Dickinson in the elevator scene. I heard it was rumored that the girl was actually a very young Fiona Apple. I don't think Fiona is old enough, but she did look like Fiona, little Fiona. Interesting. I'm going to choose to believe that's true because sure. it's fun. Let's just... Yeah, it's a harmless conspiracy yeah. theory. Oh, that won't hurt anybody. All right, well, that's I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow this all up for you. Well, God damn, damn it. Come on. Oh, I got two it seconds yourself. of believing. No, just keep it yourself. Keep it to yourself. But, but, but the truth is actually even more fascinating. So uh, Erica Katz is the girl in the elevator scene, but right before the elevator scene, right, Nancy Allen says uh, there's she's with the John, and that is Brandon Maggart, that's Fiona, Fiona Apple's, Apple's dad. Father, yeah. Oh. <laughs> nice. yeah. All right, all right. He well, was in fun. Christmas Evil. If you ever saw Christmas Evil, he's the Santa Claus that goes Okay, nuts. so who wrote in that? Did they know that, or is this just some wacky coincidence? No, no. Teresa that says that's, uh, that's a rumor she heard. I think it's just a game of telephone over time. Yeah. It's devolved Ooh, into that, her, that maybe Fiona it Apple's her father dad is yeah. in yeah. the scene. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Tony Bradshaw says, I remember seeing this on Cinemax and was shocked to see the elevator scene, mostly because I thought, wow, that's a short movie. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, Carl S. says, the episode on Dress to Kill was enjoyable as always, including your take on the HBTQ bits are less problematic than commonly believed. I think this and William Friedkin's cruising subvert genre expectations by not villainizing sexual deviants, rather society forcing people to repress their supposed deviant sexuality may not hold up psychologically, but it's allegorically progressive. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, I'm always, it's pretty I'm, deep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we got pretty deep we on got that deep episode. On that episode. Did, yeah. That was a deep yeah. episode. Uh, oh, he says he's... And angry. then we watched it like it freaks. <laughs> <laughs> um, Carl also says, uh, speaking of repressed sexuality, there's a, there was a need to bring out the sleaze and perversion that Hitchcock kept in the subtext and backstage. It's understandable that a lot of people were uncomfortable with it, though, and would rather not see De Palma make it explicit on screen. We were saying that uh, De Palma was like the more explicit... Uh, Alfred Hitchcock. Indeed. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. So thank you all very much for writing in. We appreciate it. I mean, each, uh, each one of you. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank it's you. nice to have a full mailbag every week. Yeah. It is. We yeah. love it. It's my favorite part. Mm -hmm. It is. Well, you know what my favorite part is? Wrap ups. And which we're doing now. We're <laughs> nice gonna, segue, Colin. Uh, we're going to go around the room and tell you what we thought of uh, this week's movie, which was Guns Akimbo, starting with Michaela. 
I right. feel like have I gone to you? Have I? Not no, usually. Like you don't things? usually go okay. to me first. So I'll take Michaela, it. what did you think um, about Guns of Kimba? Yeah, no, like I said, I was real panicked these first like 15 know, minutes of the movie because I was I like... I was too. I'm not going to lie. I was, well, because I, I should say, we, I've never seen this before. I hadn't even seen a trailer. The only thing I knew about this movie was that picture of Daniel Radcliffe in the bathroom with the two guns. I didn't... Which is all the marketing you need, I yeah, guess, for yeah. something like well, this. That's, it's still a meme. That still goes around in memes now. But like, I... And I... It, it's so rare nowadays that I go into a movie without even having seen a trailer or even knowing the premise like that so rarely happens that I just really didn't know what to expect but I was excited because I was like I'm always down for a gun fu movie so I was real really sweating it those are the first 20 minutes when I was like I can't do a, a combination of two movies I can't stand I can't do a combination of gamer and Scott Pilgrim and thankfully when he was like but this isn't about getting the girl I was like good because we've seen it like yeah. um wait for my short film Scott Gamer later out Scott <laughs> this year and I'm, and I'm dedicating it to you guys well if you see a lot of negative reviews you'll know who they're from Sean Just Michaela yeah. from different names yeah. and then she gets to his like Michaela thinks Sean sucks that's yeah. a terrible use of Michaela <laughs> Michaela thinks Sean sucks too yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. final <laughs> sequel yeah, yeah. <laughs> final um, final version yeah, yes. yeah um however uh despite the i feel like i complained a lot about this movie in this episode despite the soundtrack kind of annoying me and some choices that i didn't agree with i do like the movie i do find parts of it charming i find daniel radcliffe and samara weaving together very charming i find her in general just very engaging she's great uh yeah and i would like to see her more stuff especially more genre stuff like this um I did enjoy the movie overall. I thought it was great and it was funny, um, but it wasn't like overtly gross out humor, which is kind of honestly with the gamer vibe at the beginning. I was like, oh, if this is just going to be like a repulsive movie, I'm going to have a hard time, but it wasn't. Um, And I I loved the absurdity of like him struggling with gun hands like that never really got old for me because I was like, I was really putting myself in that position of like, fuck, I can't do anything like (laughs) and I was I did kind of wonder why he didn't use the voice command on his phone. Like, why not use Siri? Yeah, I thought that. You know, so, I was yeah. like... He's just lucky there's no, like, thumbprint ID. On yeah, his phone. the only right. way to get into it. Well, yeah, but then but I... Think face recognition, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess, like, depending on what phone you have, you kind of have to hold down a button to use the voice recognition, so maybe that's why. I don't know. But <laughs> anyways... Um, yeah. We can't do logistics. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I found it pretty enjoyable. I liked it. I liked how violent it was. I liked the characters, which like I feel like in gun fu movies you don't really even get to know the characters very often. So like the fact that we got to know at least a little bit of these people was a step in the right direction. Um, I mean, you heard all my problems with it the last hour, mm. so I would definitely recommend it. I enjoyed it. I think our audience would like it. It was fun. I understand if your tolerance is like one gun fu movie a year and you're burnt out after shoot 'em up, I get it. But maybe next year, watch this one. You know? Uh I'm gonna go with Sean. Sean, what do you think? I would recommend I did it. raise my hand. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah, like uh I am on the opposite end. Uh I or I'm exactly what you said. I'm a gun fu movie like once a year mm-hmm. and that's it. And we did watch Shoot 'em Up within the past year. So uh I am spent. Um I, the problem I have this movie to me is some really like fun, interesting character work surrounded by a lot of gunplay. And the gunplay to me gets boring after a while because it's, especially in this movie, I find it inconsequential. And especially with this filmmaker, it felt um, like we were just, uh, it's all, it's very stylistic. It's too stylistic for me. I need some, something else to grab onto. Apparently it's there because uh, Michaela saw it. She pointed it out. Um, Holly saw it too. You're too um, close I, to it, Sean. I, and, and, and I know that's <laughs> that's part of it. Apparently, maybe. Um, but yeah, with all that, like, it all gets dull for me. Any of that type of, I mean, messaging or any of the more entertaining stuff gets dulled for me when there's this much loud noises. I sound like a fucking old man right now, but this is just too much. F- too much, and it's just too damn loud. It's just too damn loud, <laughs> and I'm too old for this shit, and. No, but also I, I like uh, Richter. Like I don't. Th- we spend too much time with that character, considering how much little time they put into making him in- it- interesting. Outside of to make him interesting, I'll just say that he was not interesting to me, and we spend too much time with him. Um, he was tiring as a bad guy. That ending scene on the roof also feels like it goes on too long. Like it just there's pieces here that are very entertaining, very funny. Um, Samara Weaving is great. Daniel Radcliffe, I think, is great as well. Um, 
But other than that, yeah, it's just yeah, it's too much for me. I'm an old, for this movie. I'm an old man, and I'm gonna pass on it. I don't doesn't get there for me. It's too much. Come. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I agree with a lot of what you say. I guess because I, I mean, the appeal of the movie was uh, the two actors. I mean, like they're much better. Then it feels like, well, I don't know. I mean, I was going to say then the movie deserves, no, but it's like they do. And there's enough of a focus on them, you know, throughout the movie that I was like, okay, this is makes it a better movie to me than shoot em up was, mm. you know, like I liked it better than shoot em up, but it was just like my problem with these things is always exactly the same. It's this is a stylistic exercise by the director who's trying to get noticed so he can go do something bigger and better. What he's delivering to the audience is basically like a, a sensation sensory machine that, you know, we're going to just it's going to be action from, you know, screen one or, you know, from the jump all the way to the end. It's never going to stop moving. It's going to be hyper kinetic, you know, and overload that to me wears out within about it's about 45 minutes. You know, somewhere in there, it like starts to downshift and you're like, then it keeps going and you're like, Ugh, now I'm almost kind of annoyed by this. You know, uh, it's like a kid, you know, banging a bunch of pots together in your kitchen and you're just shut the hell up, you know, but, you know, so <laughs> uh, that's While the they're also trying to tell you something. Yeah. Else. And that's the experience, I guess, that I had with this movie. It just annoyed so old. me. Yeah, I was going to say, wow, we got two old men. So old. Yeah. Know, the bar here well, <laughs> yeah, but some of that is because I mean, yeah. It, you know, it is, it's true. Yeah. At some point you're old enough to have seen a bunch of stuff prior to this, that you're like, I've seen this before. I've I, seen I this before. It's like, also... what are you doing? What is it? What is the movie about? They're basically, it's, you're so inspired by video games that you're just taking like, here's what it's like to watch somebody play a video game and then dramatize it in some way. But like, I don't really care about, you know, the My nine -year -old ancillary characters that are going on through this thing. It's like, there's the movie is not about anything. Okay, I mean, again, Michaela thinks there's uh, something I, there. I was I laid out my co yeah. plan of what I think it's about. Just yeah, but I guess I I don't th I don't even know if the movie. I mean, I guess my take on it was like you know once you brought it up, but I still think that they were just using that you know uh, imagery as a punchline. I don't actually think they were saying anything about it or thought anything greater about it. It's like. It's just the movie's intention is to entertain and be a thrill ride for 90 minutes. No way. Hour and 38 minutes. Okay. Oof. You know, that's what it wants to do. And it wants to look flashy and it is competently made. It has a decent budget. And like, you know, so, I mean, if you have been interested in what you've heard, you know, you, you'll probably like this movie, but it seems like. There's a dozen other movies like this. They don't all still star Daniel Radcliffe and Samara Weaving, so you got that. But it's like, I feel like I've been through this, you know, many times before. That shouldn't be like, you know, uh, you know, uh, a reason not to watch it if you haven't seen all those before. But right. that's just saying, you, not the movie. That's me, right. not the movie. But I just don't think that there's, ultimately, there's nothing there. It's just, you know, how well are the, you know, set pieces orchestrated and they're orchestrated very well but i don't think uh that i would necessarily say you got to go see it you know so holly what do you think <laughs> um going into this movie I, you know we'd said none of us had seen this movie this was mm, new true. to all four of us um but i kind of i mean i guess just reading about it a little bit and then you know we had had people write into us talking about this movie before um I kind of knew just to take this movie as it was, um, you know, I, I don't think, I think you guys are all making good points, but like, I knew what this movie was. I knew it was going to be ridiculous. I knew it was going to be just, you know, and like you said, a gung fu movie. Um, and I kind of went into it just knowing that it was going to just be fun. Um, and I'm okay with that. I definitely had a lot of problems. I, I didn't love a lot of the style choices. Um, but I still think it was a fun movie. Um, it had it had some decent gore. It had it had funny jokes, and I love Danny Radcliffe and Samara Weaving. Like I don't know, I thought it was a fun movie. Um, definitely has its problems, but my favorite man. joke was when he's trying to wave down a car with his gun hands. 
and no one will stop. And then he's like, I mean, I get it. I get it. <laughs> that like, was that hilarious. Was hilarious. Yeah. There is some really great little moments and asides like that. Yeah. Just like, God damn it, I want. And like, Daniel Radcliffe's is, delivery of he's stuff got like great that is delivery wonderful. In this movie. Yeah. yeah, he is. He's he's very good. He's yeah. very good. I he's mean, very good. I, I don't know if I've ever seen anything that I didn't like. You know, right? Didn't at least uh, respect him for his yeah. performance. In yeah. Right. Right. So, yeah, I mean, like, I don't love the ending of this movie and there's a lot of problems with it. But overall, I found it really entertaining and I I had fun with it. So I'm going to say I'm going to say I recommend it. I think it's a good time. Um, it's not to be taken seriously. It's it's pretty ridiculous. But I mean, you know, Dana Radcliffe with guns bolted to his hands. We kind of knew it was going to be ridiculous. Um, but, yeah, that's I'm OK with ridiculous sometimes. I think it's fun. So, yeah, I'm going to recommend it. Um, by the way, the tagline is get loaded. Uh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. All right. Well, split decision split. on uh, mm-hmm. on guns at Kimbo. There's a schism. Yeah, yeah. 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 Freak show when it comes to this and movie. Sean drops the mic. Bam. And- All right. I'm <laughs> uh, next week we're gonna watch a movie that's chosen by Michaela. What are we watching next week? Spooky season. Ooh, yes, it is. Spooky season. We're gonna go into a. F- Big blind spot. I feel like we have at the Freak Show with Paranormal Activity three. Oh, okay, All right. okay, wow. okay. All right. Ten years old this year. What oh. do for the audience? What do we need to know before going into this? Literally nothing. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. If you haven't seen any, you'll Paranormal you'll understand activity, when we yeah, watch. We okay. Okay. Talk about them. okay, okay. All right. So that's next week on Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>